Hello, welcome to the screencast on doing some simple linear modeling uh, using Bayesian approaches. Uh, in class, we developed some very simple MCMC approaches ourselves, but like I said in class, those were not particularly efficient. They were mostly just to teach us what to do. Um, we'll soon uh, be getting to doing mixed models, and we're going to do a lot of our mixed models from a Bayesian perspective. So in some sense, this is really just setting ourselves up for being able to, to do this. So we're going to actually use several CAN functions in two particular libraries. Uh, those libraries, uh, as we will see in a second, are MCMC Pack, which you will have to install, and ARM, which you should already have installed on your computer if you've been following along with, with these uh, notes. And I've already read all of this in, so we can do that. And we're going to fit the same model we did as sort of one of our more complicated models for the maximum likelihood estimation, where we actually wrote our own uh, 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 negative log likelihood calculator, but we'll just call it again so, we, so you'll be able to compare it down the road. And in MCMC Pack, we're going to use one of their simple functions, just to give us some ideas of how this works, called MCMC Regress. And we're just fitting the same model with Tarsus as a a continuous covariate and genotype temperature and gen genotype by temperature interaction, where both genotype and temperature are uh, factors with two, two levels each. Though, like we discussed in class, there's several things we want to consider is how many iterations we're going to do, and that's in this case the option MCMC. We've got 10,000 that we're doing. How many iterations we want to do is burn in. Well, burn in, we're just going to do a thousand iterations here, so basically the first thousand will be dropped. And thinning, do we want to thin? Do we want to use every single iteration uh, after the burn-in, or do we want to use every second or third or whatever? So you need to do that. We also, of course, have to specify some information about our priors. We're going to do this fairly sim simply in this particular case. So this package makes some strong assumptions about what kind of uh, distributions your priors are coming from. So definitely take a look at the help file for MCMC regress to make sure you understand that. Um, and that will be part of the homework. Um, we have the location parameters for the priors. These are for your intercept and slopes. We're estimating five parameters, so our location parameters. So for our prior, sort of, the, you can think of that as the mode. Um, we're going to set those all as, at zero. Um, we could, of course, for the, uh, the uh, intercept, the overall mean, we, there'd be no reason not to set it at something closer to the mean. But the other ones, we're going to be assume that they, they're zero. And then we can also specify uh, some other parameters for the prior precision, and uh, this is the scale of the prior uh, distributions for, for intercept and slope. And uh, so the big B, B naught, those are uh, the uh, scale of the prior distributions um, for each of our, our parameters in the fixed of, or the fixed part of the model, the deterministic part of the model. In other words, those five zeros each can, uh, correspond to the intercept, tarsus, genotype, temp, and their interaction. C naught and D naught are actually priors for our residual variance, for a residual uh, unexplained variation, which again, we're, just like with maximum likelihood, we are estimating this, so we do need to have priors for this. And again, please do take a look at MCMC regress, the help file, to know what distributions that the are, it is using for the priors. That's an important thing. And pretty much, this package then does it, does it all, and actually does it pretty efficiently and quickly, you can imagine, in comparison to how long it took us with our own uh, sampler to take a, uh, fit this. Um, and we can get sort of the standard, this uses CODA like we used in class, to get sort of the standard types of plots, um, both for the, the traces for the iterations, um, as well as the density plots, um, which is always a, an important diagnostic to look at. And we have more parameters to look at, so it's going to go through them all and look at it. I'm not sure why it's doing this weird... Uh, overwriting, but that's not so important. So we see the trace of each of them, and they all seem unimodal and, and reasonably well behaved, which is a good thing. Uh, so from that, we, of course, use HPD interval to get the highest posterior density uh, credible intervals, which is fundamentally one useful way for us to summarize what we're seeing here. Um, and uh, that's usually one of the, once we, we've done some diagnostics, this is where I, you know, this is the center of our inference for, for the Bayesian analysis. Uh, when, we, when we're approximating the posterior distribution. If you do summary, it'll give you, in addition to the, the uh, coefficients itself uh, and standard deviation for the posterior, the, the um, approximate posterior distribution, as well as time series uh, estimates that, that adjust uh, for um, autocorrelation. We also can get the quantile 
credible intervals or percentile credible intervals as well. And it's always worth comparing those to the highest posterior density. So I would suggest pausing this and taking a, a quick look to see how, say, they compare to one another. Um, but but uh, you'll probably see that they're pretty similar. So for instance, for Tarsus, it's from 14 to 23 for the, the um, highest posterior density. These are also about 14 to 23 for the percentile. That's good. Of course, we want to use some diagnostics to check how well we've done. Um, the, we'll start with effective size instead. Effective size is saying well, how many uh, effective iterations have we done. In other words, it's accounting for autocorrelation and potentially some other things, how many we've done. For most of them, it's pretty much right around 10,000. This occasionally happens, in particular for, for variances. You get something like this where it seems like it can be larger. I'm not actually sure what explains that. Um, how it can have that, but that does occasionally happen. In this case, they're all pretty close to 10,000, so I'm not too worried. If some of these parameters or, or variances were really far away from that, I'd be more worried and would potentially do some thinning as well as that. The Rafferty diagnostics, as we discussed in class, give us some, some sorts of things, sort of suggesting burn-in, uh, uh, lower boundary up to, to sort of get a, get a sense of what we would require to get good estimates for our posterior density as well. Um, but really, we saw this all with the effect of size. It sort of already gave us a pretty good idea that we didn't have any problems. And then, of course, you can do the autocorrelation plot, which is going to be a lot of small plots for this. Um, so I'm not going to go looking for it. But it'll be much like, uh, like we saw in class, where if there's a lot of autocorrelation and those are high, it means that we clearly have to do some thinning. Um, when it comes to using any pre-built functions, we always want to have double ways of checking our results. Of course, this might be something you could simply just check. You could check using uh, maximum likelihood or least squares estimation to see if you're getting reasonably similar uh, results. You could write out the uh, MCMC sampler yourself. That would not be too hard. And in fact, the on the uh, ANGEL website, I do have an example uh, for a simple model uh, using a simple Gibbs sampler. So you could use that. Um, but just to make your life a little bit easier, since the goal of this is not a formally a Bayesian class, so I didn't want you guys to spend as much time writing your own samplers. Um, we'll just use some other pre-built functions, and the Gelman and Hill book, uh, the ARM library actually has one. Of course, this you could also check using JAGs if you wanted to. If you wanted to use JAGs or bugs, that'd be another appropriate way. Um, but we're just going to use the Bayes GLM function um, in ARM, which you know, specify the model uh, family data just like before. Then it has its own definitions for, say, the prior mean, prior mean for intercept, um, the scale for the intercept. It makes some additional assumptions. Again, take a look at the help file for what um, distribution it's using to fit these. So take a take a look at it, uh, and then you can compare this these summaries. Uh, in this case, to yours. Um, and for our purposes. Uh, of, of this class, and certainly for your, your coming assignment, I would say that largely what you'll be interested in is using MCMC regress and double checking things, either with likelihood, uh, uh, just to give you an idea if you're getting ballpark similar results, of course you won't get exactly similar results, and remember why, and think about things like what the posterior mode versus posterior mean is, in particular when you have flat prior. Um, but this will be the main one you'll use for now, and when we start talking about mixed models, we'll be using some much more sophisticated approaches. And again, if you want to, you can write your own for these. All right, thanks very much.